Greetings, intellectuals. When I first saw the black hole scene in the movie Interstellar, my brain practically melted and poured out of my ears. I wanted to try and render my own version of the black hole using only Newtonian mechanics, as like a science challenge. Definitely not, because general relativity is too hard. The first thing we need to understand is a 3D rendering technique called ray tracing. This technique is used to make Pixar movies and also Minecraft, apparently. For every pixel on our screen, we trace a ray from the camera point to our virtual screen and check to see if it intersects any of the objects in our scene. If it does, we trace a shadow ray from the intersection point to the light source to see if the point is being illuminated. If it is, we color that pixel the color of the object, or if it's in shadow, we color it black. This works well for rough objects, but not shiny ones. You may recall from physics class that when a light ray strikes a mirror, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. We can use this fact to compute the reflected ray, then start the ray tracing algorithm over again. If we do this iteratively, we can make these trippy mirror tunnels, which you can see on the screen. We can also use Snell's law to compute a refracted ray. This allows us to accurately render transparent materials like glass or water. The ray tracing algorithm can give us some impressive results, but it won't work for a black hole because rays always travel in straight lines. The gravity of the black hole curves the trajectories of not only stars and planets, but also light rays. This effect is called gravitational lensing, and we can simulate it with Newton's law of gravity. But let's start with a simple thing. Say we have a planet orbiting a star, and we know both of their positions, velocities, and masses. First we compute the acceleration due to gravity, and add it to their velocities. Then we move them by adding their velocities to their positions. And that will complete one time step. If we do this repeatedly, the planet will trace out a path that approximates a true parabolic orbit. Here's an example of what this looks like. Now, here's where things get weird. We can treat our rays as thousands of tiny little planets and allow them to follow the same orbital trajectories as planets would until they intersect an object in our scene. This doesn't make a lot of sense because light rays have no mass, but I'm just gonna handle it that way. The other concern is that we expect that if a photon passes the event horizon, it will spiral into the singularity and never escape, which is what makes black holes black to begin with. If we treat photons like planets, the photon will never spiral in, because when it gets very close, its velocity will get very large to compensate. This is a side effect of the law of conservation of angular momentum. But this too can be hand-waved away if we keep the photon's speed constant and only use gravity to change its direction. Making light speed constant definitely seems like the right thing to do here, and now the photons will indeed spiral inward. With all of that implemented, we get the clip I'm currently playing here. Notice the accretion disk in green is completely flat, and it only appears bent because light rays themselves are curved. At this point, I'm going to switch from using ray tracing to a very similar algorithm called ray marching because it will make the finishing touches a lot easier to implement. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, Sebastian Log made a great visual demonstration of how it works in his video, so I'll link to that. So this is looking much better, but after all that talk of gravity, these orbits are looking pretty suspicious. The black hole doesn't seem to be affected by gravity at all, and I would expect that the orbits would be much more chaotic given that it's a three-body system. It's almost as if I just programmed these two planets to orbit in perfect circles. So the last thing I'll implement is true parabolic orbits in the way I described earlier. While positioning the black hole in the black void of space is more realistic, I think the lensing effect is much more clear when it's enclosed by a box. Note that the box here is a perfect cube, 
and its warped appearance is caused by gravitational lensing. You probably remember this actual image of a black hole that a team of scientists compiled a couple months ago. Here I've tried to match the perspective in my program. I love the way this beast just devours light, like I'm pretty sure it's breaking my rendering program, but who knows, maybe it would actually look this weird. In the relatively flat region of space-time that we live in, you can never see more than three sides of a cube at once. But if we put a singularity at the center of the cube, the light rays are warped in such a way as to allow us to see much more. And now to answer the question posed in the title. What would it look like to fall in? Well, if you fell in facing forward, you would see your entire field of view contort into a sphere and shrink to a single point. But if you fell in facing forward,